Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're continuing our discussion in section 1.3 of our textbook about vectors and vector spaces. In the previous video, we learned about what a vector space is, and we saw the canonical example of a vector space, that is, these physical arrows in space that could represent velocity, uh, it could represent force, uh, just, just as some examples we would see in physics, right? But our vectors are, are literally arrows for which we can operate addition and scale multiplication using things like the parallelogram rule and such. Now, another type of vector is actually just an array of numbers. So in this context, our vectors are going to be arrays, arrays of numbers. Now I have to be careful what I mean by number here because we have scalar numbers, we have vector numbers. So these are gonna be arrays of scalars, which are numbers which come out of a field. And typically, these arrays are going to be written vertically. Uh, so, for example, we might take something like this array, one, uh, one, two, three. So, we'll write this as an array where we write the first number on top, then the next number, then the next number, and however many numbers there happens to be in the array. Now, this is, this is how we're most commonly going to denote our vectors, but sometimes it makes more sense from like a typesetting point of view. Uh, we might write, so in this case, our vector could be written vertically, but we could also write it horizontally. Uh, we might say something like one, two, three. And in this context, we make no distinction between these things because the vector itself is an array of numbers. We have to know the first number, the second number, the third number. The array is ordered, right? If we switch up the order a little bit, uh, this is not considered the same vector. There's a first number, there's a second number, there's a third number, and that matters. That matters a lot, right? And also the length of the, like the number of components in the vector also matters, right? If you had something like one, one, two, three, this would be considered a different vector still because this vector has four components. This vector has two, or sorry, three components. And even though it's the same three numbers, one, two, and three, the fact that one is repeated here but not here distinguishes between these vectors. And so the vector itself is this array of numbers. The, num the, the order matters. The number of numbers matters. Um, but the exact arrangement, we really don't care about. We could write it vertically. We could write it horizontally, and that's fine. Now, one thing I do want to caution you about is that if you want to write your vector um, horizontally, do not write it with brackets uh, like the following. Right, we're not going to do that. Now you might be like, well, you did brackets over here. Why does that matter? Well, the thing is, at this context, as we're learning about vectors here, this object right here is referred to as a col oftentimes called a column vector to distinguish it from other types of vectors one could study. And then the, naturally, this one right here, uh, we would call a row vector. And now, as we think about vectors, there's there's no distinction between writing things vertically or horizontally. But later on, particularly in chapter three and beyond, when we start focusing more on matrices, which matrices are gonna be uh, two-dimensional arrays of numbers as opposed to these vectors, which are one-dimensional. And the, in, in the two-dimensional case, we actually do wanna distinguish between vertical and horizontal. That is, we wanna distinguish between column vectors and row vectors. And so because of that, we don't wanna get in the habit of doing that right now. And so when you write your, if you write your vectors horizontally, avoid using the square brackets. Instead, if you want to write things horizontally because you feel like it, it works better on the page, put parentheses, put parentheses around it, much like we would write a point in space. Because uh, really, we're not making any distinction between points in space and these vectors here. Sometimes uh, linear algebra textbook, calculus textbook try to put this huge emphasis on that vectors, vectors, and points in space are two different things. But in fact, that's actually a, a huge misnomer. What we're saying here is that, oh, vectors are points in space uh, because we can add them and we can scale them. What does it mean to add vectors in this context? If you have uh, two vectors, uh, column vectors here, so we have like some x1, some x2, and let's say there's n entries, and you wanna add this to some other vector, We'll say y1, y2, up to yn. How does one add these two vectors together? Well, what we do is we simply just add their components. x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, all the way down to x, uh, xn plus yn. We can add together 
the vectors just by adding together their components. And how does one scale a vector? Like if you have some scalar C and you times it by the vector x1, x2, all the way down to xn. Well, scalar multiplication we defined as just, just times each of the components in the vector by the scalar C. So the scalar product would look like C x1, C x2, all the way down to C x n. And that's how we define the vector operations for this, for these column vectors here. And this can be done for any, any, um, any field whatsoever. And so we actually introduced the notation uh, f to the n right here. This is going to equal the set of vectors. I should say the, 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 the set of column vectors. Column vectors with n entries. So there's n numbers in there. Um, and I should also mention entries from the field F. And so some examples of this type of thing, we could talk about the vector space Rn. Um, we could talk about the vector space Q3. So this would be vectors with three rational entries. We could talk about the, com the, the complex vector space C2. Uh, this would be vectors with two numbers, which are complex numbers. And so this is, turns out to not be any more complicated than one might think. Um, let's do an example in R3. That is, we take vectors in R3. What this means is that our, we'll take vectors with three numbers in the array, and these numbers are going to be real numbers. So as case in point, take the vectors u and v here. Uh, so u is the vector containing 6, negative 2, and 2. v will be the vector which contains negative 3, 0, and 5. And so when you add together u and v, well, here's u, here's v. And so vector addition here just means add together the points in the same position. So you get 6 plus negative 3 or 6 minus 3, which is 3. For the second component, you'll take negative 2 plus 0, as you see right here. That's just a negative 2. And then lastly, for the third component, you'll take 3, or for the third component, you take 2 plus 5, like you see here, which is just a 7. And so the vector sum of u plus v is just 3, negative 2, 7. Um, it couldn't be simpler than that. The only difficulty here is the difficulty of arithmetic for the associated field. Um, scalar multiplication, same basic idea. Take the vector. This time we're going to take v to be negative 1, 3, and 2. And let's scale the vector by 3. And if we do that, so 3 times this vector, that means we're going to take 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. We take 3 times 3, which is a 9, and we take 3 times 2, which is equal to 6. And that's all there is to this, um, to this scalar multiplication and vector addition. And one could show that these simple operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication give us the axioms of the vector space, those eight properties we saw previously. And in fact, essentially, these are the only ways we can, we can define vector addition and scalar multiplication for, for column vectors and to guarantee those axioms. And you'll explore that principle in the homework a little bit.